Today, I want to talk to you about three tips to ensure that you will not have any lifting at the free edge of your gel nail enhancements. Hey there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Paola of paolaponsanails.com and I help you specialize in the use of Japanese soft gel nail systems for all of your nail services, whether you're DIY or pro. Welcome, welcome back, all right? And if you're new here and if you like today's content, do consider subscribing. Lifting technically happens in two areas. You can add a third, we can talk about that. It usually happens at the cuticle area or the free edge, prominent areas that it happens on. Now, some people will experience lifting on the sidewalls, but that's actually a little bit more inconspicuous due to cuticle. Cuticle tends to be invisible on the nail plate and that is prominent probably why you're going to have lifting there out of the blue or your gel simply touches the skin anytime gel touches the skin it will lift okay so that can be easily troubleshoot i mean just this talk enough probably already you know made you nod your head like yeah that happens and so you can go ahead and fix that but lifting at the cuticle area and the free edge is a little bit more inconspicuous like it might really just you know make you want to break your head because you do not understand what's going on you're doing every single step correctly so why are you still getting the lifting and it's knocking at your confidence your client is you know maybe upset if you're pro so let's troubleshoot that today tip number one do not over prep the nails why because if you do not have enough keratin or a healthy keratin so nails are made out of keratin if you don't have a good amount and a healthy amount then your product is not going to experience the best adhesion one thing you have to know about soft gel is that it works with the nail okay so the stronger the nail is the better adhesion the better enhancement the longer wearing you will have of your gel nails so that longevity that retention that's it's all going to go up if the natural nails are relatively healthy and strong. So you as the professional, if you're doing this DIY, take note also, but you as the professional have to make sure that you do not over prep the client's natural nail. And actually when you're giving a service, you're going to be a little bit more mindful than when you're doing it on yourself. I speak from experience, okay? I'm a little bit more hard with prepping my nails. So you don't want to thin the keratin down. Let's talk about this. When you're using soft gel systems, did you know that all of these bases here, cocoa is, leaf gel, and vetro, did you know that all of these bases here are sanding free, which means that the nail technically does not even need a sponge buffer on it before you apply any of these bases. So you, what would you do before you apply your base? Well, you would take alcohol solution 90% and really dehydrate the nail plate and then go on to apply this. I recommend that for DIYers. If you're just doing this on yourself and you don't wanna damage your nails and you don't wanna get aggressive with the tools and the buffers, especially like the e-file tools, right? Then take note of that. You may just wanna manicure that last few like two weeks, maybe even a week if you like to switch them. So all of these base gels, okay? We're talking about Cocoa's Mega Stick Base Gel. We are talking about Leaf Gel Premium's Sanding Free Base. And we are talking about Vetro's Base Max. All three of these do not require that you prep the nail. Now, again, that manicure may last you a little bit long, less time, so you're gonna experience a little bit of lifting, but what you're giving in return is, hey, I'm not even gonna prep my natural nail with this. So this is the route that I recommend for DIYers, like the safe route, right? You're not going to over or over prep your nails, okay? But what if you are pro or even DIY and you want a little bit better adhesion? So without prepping the nail, the less you do to the nail, the less the service is going to last, okay? But remember, we are worried about the free edge here. So I would recommend that you always prep start, even on your clients, start with a 200 grit sponge buffer. The reason for that is because you don't need to prep the nail in order for these to adhere then why would you even start with a coarse file? You actually wanna start with the minimal amount of grittiness, okay? Now, if you're fine with this, and this gives you all of the adhesion that you need, like you just prepped your nails with this and a little bit of alcohol, and you're getting wonderful adhesion, amen, stop right there. But what if you're like, all right, I'm getting two weeks, but at two weeks it starts lifting just a tiny bit somewhere, and you want more adhesion? Well, the 100 grit, 180 grit sponge buffer, which is a size up than your 200. So it's softer and then it's a little bit coarse, not that much. And you would use this on the entire nail or even just the free edge, okay? 
Now you're going to increase adhesion. Remember, the more you do to the nail, the better the adhesion, but you really wanna stay within the middle because if you over prep, now the nail plate is gonna start decaying. So less keratin cells, more dehydration, and it's just going to be like, you know, issues after issues after issues because now you're kind of starting to abuse the nail. So you wanna add little by little and then see what you need, okay? For salon services, I do recommend that you do a buffing prep. Again, if you're DIY, you, you must know that these don't require buffing prep. Or if someone in your uh, salon comes in, right, you have an appointment and they, they're they like kind of scared of gels, right? They've either had a bad experience or they've read and heard and watched the videos of how gels damage your nails or whatever, right? So they're like, I just want something temporary. My, my daughter's getting married, you know, next week. And I just need them to last like these few days and then the event and then a few days after. Well, you would recommend the first option. Like, wonderful. Well, I have these systems that do not require that we even prep etch the nail. So this is the perfect answer for that. You're going to get the best adhesion with the sponge buffer. All of your customers, you are going to get the best adhesion by just doing a gentle 100 to 180 grit sponge buffer on the natural nail thoroughly, meaning making sure that around the entire perimeter of the nail, after you've done your cuticle prep and your free edge, um, there's no shine. So you're just gentle. You don't want to do this, okay, fast, because you're going to start shaving keratin at a lower speed than, an, let's just say, an Arbor Band on an e-file machine, but you're still nevertheless removing keratin. So just very gentle, very thorough, just making sure the goal is that there is not a single shiny spot on the natural nail. That's the goal when you're using your sponge buffer. And you're going to solve all of your issues that way, including obviously at the free edge, you know, check. And here's a little secret tip. Do not touch any part of the nail, but especially the free edge. Your customer, if you're doing this on a client, might be tempted to do this. Right? Ooh, they feel so strong. And they then touch them with the pads of their fingers, which have oils. Issues, right? Issues, issues, because now we're depositing oils. So that's going to take care of your free edge lifting, being thorough and not over filing it because if you over file this part, the free edge is no longer attached to the nail bed, okay? So if this is my nail bed and this is my nail plate growing out, right? It's growing, it's growing, it's growing. As soon as it leaves the nail bed, well, it no longer has support, right? And if you left that too thin, it's going to be weak and it's going to be peeling. And that's why you may wanna check out a previous video that we just did two, three days ago about why cuticle oil isn't the only reason why your nails are pulling away from the product and you're having separation, okay? Maybe controversial, but it's very easy to understand, okay? You may wanna watch that three videos ago. If you have any issues and you will have a problem lifter, meaning no matter what, this customer always lifts or starts lifting a little bit, right? No matter what you do. So then you're gonna take it up a notch, right? Notice how we're slowly increasing. We're not starting with, an Arbor Band and E-File. That's for different systems. That's for hard systems, okay? Whether that's acrylic, hard gel, poly gel, that's for hard systems. I go over this more in detail in the free masterclass. Link in the description box below. You can watch it immediately. So this is for hard products, like if you have an Arbor Band and all of that. I'm not saying that's bad, you know, but you gotta know your systems. And so is this one. If you use this on the natural nail, so this is a board file, it's a little bit more coarse, so it's 100 or 180 grit. You don't necessarily want to always, again, when you're dealing with soft gel nail systems, you don't always wanna deal with this. You wanna keep it within your sponge buffers and that's it. But you will have a problem lifter. Maybe you are the problem lifter, like if you're a DIYer. And so what you wanna do is take your coarse file. You're gonna be like, all right, I played nice and I'm still getting lifting on one or two people and I just can't figure it out. All right. Bring out the course file and here's the thing, let the file do the work for you. You're simply going to go pss, 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 teeny tiny bit on the free edge, teeny tiny bit on the free edge, okay? that's. Do I have to say that again? <laughs> teeny tiny bit on the free edge, letting the grit of the board file do the prepping for you. Now, why would you increase the grit? And you're like, Paula, aren't you removing keratin if I increase the grit? Well, if you saw it back and forth, you are. You're like, you're gonna see the dust, 
just flow through the atmosphere here and you'll be like, oh, there goes the carrot head, right? But if you just take that board file and you just gently kind of just etch it, we're not adding pressure. You're letting the grit of the file do the work for you. And you just do that on the free edge, just the free edge. I'm not always abusing the entire nail. Then this is the bond. Soft gels are going to lay themselves like this on each other, kind of making a little bit of a bond somehow, sometimes like this, right? But when you etch the nail, it's the bond is like this. You see this right here? Right here. This bond is obviously way stronger than this. And so perhaps you're like, well, why don't I always use my buffer and or my EFA with an urban so they can always leave the salon like this, right? Well, the thing is, what about your removals? This can still lift, by the way. If your customer has moistures and oils that just overproduce on her fingernails, which is possible, then this is still going to separate, okay? We'll talk about that in just a moment. This is still going to separate no matter that they did this. There's oils and moisture loosening up those bonds and separation happens, okay? That's why we're saying we're starting slow because not everyone needs this. Not everyone needs this. It's kind of like the Russian manicure, right? The excessive cutting and nipping of the skin and the cuticle area. 80% of customers don't need that, so don't give them that. Don't start there. Add to it as they need it. So with that being said, that's what's going to happen with the board file. A bond like this, and that may be the problem solving answer to your customer's problem of not being able to keep her nails together. So do not worry about like, oh my gosh, I'm over etching the nails. You're doing that ever so often. Besides that, soft gel nail systems last like three plus weeks. So you're not doing that on the nails every one week or every two weeks. They do last longer. She's coming like once a month, your customer is, that is. All right, so that's it. Don't over prep the nail. That's my tip number one. And we gradually move into what we need. We start as DIYers with not even prepping the nail. We're using gentle systems that already have adhesion component bond onto the nail. The bond kind of goes like this. The more you etch the nail, the bond can go like that. But what about if you're soaking off? Well, that means also that this nail is going to kind of be coming away from this and you're going to leave that damage exposed. So that's why we want to keep things to a minimal. Tip number two for improving adhesion at the free edge. Do not apply a thin layer of product there. You've seen the structure gel manicures on Instagram, online, anywhere, right? And they basically look a little thicker. I'll tell you what, not a lot of people, not a lot of customers like that look, okay? Be cautious of offering structure gel manicures and your customer may not really want that, okay? Most will, okay? So if you wanna categorize yourself, your business as a structure gel manicure, business, that's fine. Just know that not all clients will want that. And you need to communicate this to your customer. You have to say like, you know, I know you don't like the structured look. We don't have to do that. But I do have to apply a generous thin layer of product. If you apply a very thin layer, and I'm talking about like, this is your brush, and you're pressuring the gel on there, like, you know, with pressure, you're applying it like this. That's too thin. Your brush, even though it's a thin layer, should float with gel, float, okay? So wherever you start, depending what method you use um, or what method you're trained in, I teach different certifications. You guys know Kogo is Leaf Gel Vetro and in the MGM program. And actually all the brand certifications have a little bit of, of a different way to apply them. I teach you in MGM, the Master Gel Nails course, how to apply regardless of what system you use, okay? That's like my tried and true and will work for me in the salon. And it can work for you too. And if you're DIY, you're invited to join also, okay? That's MGM, the Master Gel Nose course only teaches you how to apply the product. MGM Pro, which we open twice a year, that's more if you wanna go pro, <laughs> hence MGM Pro, right? And we teach you how to price your services, how to convert your customers into Japanese gel wearers, how to electric file, how to gain some clientele, and how to even become a nail affiliate for your favorite product. So that's MGM Pro, that's like really taking what we do here with soft gels as a career career. And again, that program opens up in January, late January. If you're considering nails as a career, that's like the all-encompassing program, MGN Cores will just teach you how to apply Japanese soft gel. Tangent, but I think that's necessary, especially because MGM Pro is going to be opening up towards the end of January. So I think we need to start considering that if we're going to go pro for 2023, taking our career serious. With that being said, very little product is going to peel. What you don't want to do with a 
soft gel system in a pot, it's a little thicker for a reason. You want to use that thickness to your advantage. It's not super thick. And you don't have to structure when you apply your base gel. If you want to thicken base max by vetro, you have to do two coats, okay? Everything else you can apply a little generously thin. So very little product will lead to lifting. Make sure you double up on your product um, and you're generous with that first layer of base gel. Tip number three for ensuring that you don't have lifting in the free edge is that you use the scrubby method. What's the scrubby method? Well, we talked about how we don't want to use very little product on the first layer. It's going to lead to peeling, okay? If you did all of your prep correct and you apply your base gel too thin, it's going to just peel, end of story. So what do you do? I recommend you do the scrubby method. So the scrubby method, or it doesn't necessarily have to be super scrubby, is when you take one of your base gel products and you kind of just scrub it at the tip because you don't want it to create bulk. Just scrub it at the tip and go ahead and cure it. So now you've ensured that there's gel for sure on those tips of the free edge and that there's no product missing and there's no lifting and peeling that's going to happen at the free edge, okay? The other thing you can do is if you don't want to etch the nail with a board file, if you're like, oh, I really don't want to put any abrasives on my nail, I recommend a bonder. But I'm here to tell you that you're not relying on bonder for no free edge lifting. If you've done everything that we've talked about thus far, you will be good. Let's recap. Number one way to avoid free edge lifting is Two, do not over prep the nail because you're removing keratin and that's less keratin that the gel has to hold on to and the less keratin to absorb impact. Do not use very little product, okay? You have to use a generous amount of base gel. That does not mean you flood the entire nail with base gel, but it can't not be like squeaky thin like this. You have your Base gel brush should float on there when you're applying. Number three, scrub a little bit of base gel on the nails, or if you want to use a bonder on the free edge only. Why the free edge only and not the entire nail? Well, we don't want to saturate the nail with chemicals if we don't need to, number one. Number two, you're wasting product, not the entire ne nail needs the bonder. And number three, your system, the soft gel systems, Japanese gel that we're using here does not require all of that so don't invest your time and your money on these steps that you don't need okay so just keep all of that in mind i hope this video was helpful and i'll see you tomorrow we're continuing on with our one video per day challenge this month that's right one video each day for a total of 31 consecutive videos if you're all in on soft potted gel nail systems or being a specialized gel nail stylist in these systems i got your back these next 30 days and of course in this channel all together because those are revolving topics here please please make sure to subscribe to the channel but most importantly hit the notification bell icon so that you're notified as soon as our video drops otherwise every video goes up at 6 p.m eastern thank you for watching and if you found this video valuable would you do me a favor and give it a thumbs up so that i may help more people do check out the description box below for any current resources and promo codes thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one